Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and uh, I actually got a pretty interesting question emailed to me by a new subscriber, uh, brand new to prepping. So uh, hopefully you are watching this and hopefully this answers some of your questions. I did get back to you in email form, but I figured, hey, if one has the question, then there's a very high probability that others have the same question or very similar question. Uh, this is actually a very young single mom, and uh, she is just getting into, uh, you know, the preparedness community. And so she was asking the question of, uh, she uh, just got into a new place, and uh, she was trying to do some different things around her new place and realized that uh, she was struggling to do uh, basic things, uh, hang up some pictures, uh, do minor uh, repairs to the, the uh, new place and things like that, as well as, you know, put together some uh, like Ikea furniture or something, if you will. Uh, so she asked me, what kinds of tools would be a good idea for a, a prepper to have? And I thought that that was an extremely interesting question. And uh, I started to make a list and then I realized this is going to be pretty big. So we're going to break this up into a series where I'm going to do uh, different tools for different aspects that you may encounter, uh, you know, for SHTF and the things that you would want to have for all that. And so in this very beginning one, we're going to start out with the very basics. Just what generalized tools would you have for general repairs? So kind of your absolute, uh, very basic. What would I recommend? All right. So the very first thing that I would say is you're going to want a hammer. Now, uh, in all of this, I'm going to try and talk you through my thinking and why I'm recommending these. Uh, this is not an absolute must. You don't have to go out and uh, purchase this exact list. You're going to have to go through, uh, you know, your skill level and, uh, you know, your financial means and things like that. And you're going to have to adjust it for you. Uh, these are just, again, uh, recommendations. And so uh, it's just to get you to thinking on uh, what would be maybe a good idea for you to have if you don't already have it. Now, real quick disclaimer, I'm not going to do any name brands. That's up for you to decide. I will say, uh, you know, make sure that you get something that is going to at least be reliable. Uh, a lot of times those uh, dollar store tools aren't even worth the buck. That is, uh, you know, uh, what they want for it. Uh, it's better to go and get a uh, second hand that has a, a reliable uh, background, if you will, for it. The purpose of this is not to pick up some sort of uh, name brand or manufacturer saying one's better than the other. That's for you. So let's go ahead and jump into this now that we've got all that out of the way. First up is going to be a hammer. Now, uh, this is probably going to be like firearms, blades, and everything else uh, where people are going to get caught up on a bunch of this. We're trying to generalize. So hammer. When it comes to it, if you can only afford one or you're only going to choose one, my recommendation would be get the old trusty claw hammer. That's probably your best bet. Um, that way it gives you a lot more versatility. Yes, we can go into getting something that's more of a mallet. We can get something that's a, a three pound mini sledge. We can go into all the different types of hammers and things like that. Wood, fiberglass, all, all that stuff. The big thing is, is if you don't own a hammer, uh, you may, when you go out, whether it is going to be buying a brand new one from a store or going to a flea market or a garage sale, make sure that you don't look at it and go hammer, buy and go home. Uh, pick it up, make sure that it, it feels sturdy, make sure it feels pretty good in your hand. It's not too heavy for you. It's not too long, too big, too small, all that. Make sure that you are comfortable with it or, you know, at least you feel that you could become comfortable with it. Next is going to be a hand saw. Now, again, we can go into it. Is it going to be an old carpenter saw? Is it going to be a hacksaw? Is it going to be, you know, 
uh, yeah, there, there's plenty of different reasons on why you can get this salt over that salt or get a variety of salts and all that. I would say just a uh, decent carpentry saw would probably be the best thing. You're going to uh, be sawing wood for the most part. Uh, if you could, a uh, second one would be a hacksaw, so that way it gives you the ability to cut metal. Uh, if you think that it's one saw cuts everything, I would encourage you to uh, go and look into that. Uh, you have two different materials and they require two different blades. And so uh, I would personally do wood over top of metal, but that again, that's just me and just a, a preference over my opinion. Next is going to be an adjustable wrench. Uh, really, if you could, I would get two and get them in different sizes. Yes, they come in different sizes. Uh, I would probably, if you couldn't afford it, I would stay away from the really, really small ones. I would get uh, probably at least two mediums or a medium and large would probably be your better off. Um, and, and when you get an adjustable wrench, it gives you a lot better of a way that uh, I know somebody's going to shout out, why not just have a socket set? We're going to get into that in a little bit. But this is one tool to cover a variety of sizes when it comes to nuts and bolts. So that's why I would say at least one adjustable wrench, if you can afford it, if you can get it, get two and try and get them in different sizes. Three, or what are we on, four? Uh, pliers. Getting a good trusty set of pliers is going to be a very good thing to have. Uh, not only is it going to give you the ability to uh, get in there and grip hold of something uh, you know there's all sorts of, of cotter keys and different pins and things that you just need to be able to get uh, yes i will see somebody's going to uh, pop in there and they're going to say you need locking pliers and things like that okay i get it um, i would say uh, just a regular set of pliers if if you can only get one set you know one pair of pliers it would be that uh, and again, they come in all different shapes, sizes, colors. They're all for various different things. Uh, but to at least have one, and it goes again, what kind of partners with the adjustable wrench. Uh, if you can't get two adjustable wrenches, get one adjustable wrench, one set of pliers, because if you have something that has a nut and bolt, you're going to need to be able to hold one end while rotating the other. And with uh, only having one thing, uh, you may not be able to get that nut and bolt apart. Next is going to be screwdrivers. You're going to want a minimum of a flathead and a Phillips. Those are going to be the absolute minimum. Now, you're going to get them in all sorts, again, shapes, colors, sizes, all that. You're going to get into uh, number one, number two, number three, you know, of all these slotteds and, and all these uh, things that are on the end of it and all that you will want probably a number two on a slotted and a Phillips head. And that's going to be an absolute minimum. Uh, and you're going to want to probably get a halfway decent. So uh, if, if money's an issue, second hand is okay. Uh, flea markets, things like that, going to a garage sale and getting something with a very good name brand because uh, there's nothing worse than, uh, you know, trying to use a screwdriver and somebody's already screwed up the end. Uh, and especially if you only have two to work with, you're going to be relying a lot on those. Uh, I would recommend there's, there's usually some good sales going on and try and get a good set. Um, but again, you know, uh, especially if you're trying to keep on to all this stuff, having multiple things all over the place, especially if you're trying to be mobile. Let's say that you've got a bug out and you're not going to take your entire garage filled with tools with you. You're going to want to have something to take with you. So you're going to want to try and have, uh, you know, as less tools that can do multiple things, uh, kind of going back into why I would do an adjustable wrench over a socket set. Uh, but again, we'll get in that in just a minute. Uh, next is going to be drill bits. Um, if you can get them, you can use drill bits without power. Uh, it sucks. I know it. Anybody that has used them without power tools, uh, it's not fun. 
but uh, it's definitely doable. Uh, you will probably at some point in time during SHTF need to put a hole in something and drill bits will come in extremely handy. Next is going to be a measuring tape of some sort. Uh, I would, and this is just again a preference on me, I actually like to get the measuring tape that is uh, more for fabric because uh, I don't have to deal with the noise and uh, worrying about the spring and if I uh, drop it or if anything happens, now you've got this big mess. Uh, I like to be able to just have a uh, certain length of a very soft measuring. I can roll it up, shove it in my pocket, uh, do all sorts of different things with it. It's much more pliable. Uh, I know that there's going to be people that probably disagrees with me. That's okay. I'm just giving opinions. Next is going to be a pry bar. You're definitely going to be needing to pry things apart. Uh, and, and a pry bar is going to come in very, very handy. Just like all the other things that we've talked about, you're going to see them. They're going to come in all sorts of different lengths and sizes and colors and different things on the end and all that. Uh, probably a small pry bar would be just fine if you can afford it. Yes, uh, another pry bar that is bigger would be good. Uh, and, and for those of you, crowbar, if, if that's a more of a term that you better understand. Uh, next is going to be a wire brush. You're going to probably in SHTF be encountering a lot of rusted hardware. And so the ability to be able to clean some of that off is going to be very valuable so you get less broken things you can see more of what you're working with uh, you can get some of that corrosion off different things like that a wire brush is probably going to be extremely overlooked and again they're going to come in all sorts of different uh, materials whether it's going to be stainless brass uh, things like that they're going to come in different sizes and shapes something like a toothbrush all the way you know they got pretty big ones uh, and, and keep in mind too, you can double down. If you don't have a wire brush, it's SHTF. If you have a grill, go out and get your grill brush. You know, it'll work in a pinch, uh, but this way it's uh, relatively peacetime. If you can afford a wire brush, uh, I would recommend it. Next thing, if you can get it, is going to be your adhesives. Uh, so it's going to be things like duct tape and electrical tape. Uh, those are going to probably be, you know, duct tape is, is probably a prepper's best friend and uh you know if, if you can get it now's the time to you know grab uh, maybe an extra roll or two of uh, one of each um as well as maybe double-sided tape as well uh next is that is uh, again in my opinion often overlooked is going to be hardware things like nuts bolts and nails uh, there's a lot of people that they have a ton of tools but they don't have things to replace broken hardware during an SHTF, remember, if you drop that uh, wing nut, if you uh, snap a bolt off or do anything along those lines, if you have nothing to replace it, uh, you're making the situation a heck of a lot worse. You could even be to the point that whatever you were trying to do, you just wasted an hour of time and now, you know, it's completely useless. There, there's nothing you can do. Uh, maybe you're a little bit ingenuitive and you can figure out other means. Uh, maybe you have zip ties or mechanics wire or whatever. Sure, I get it, uh, but if you have the extra hardware, you know, it it's, makes it a little bit better. Uh, but make sure you also stock up on nails. There's going to be a lot of times that taking nuts and bolts apart, especially without uh, the next thing I was going to talk about, which is lubricants and penetrants, without things like that, uh, there's going to be a lot of nuts and bolts that it's going to get broken or get seized or anything like that uh, after SHTF begins. Nails are going to be probably the primary thing again, like they were in the old days. If you are a student of history, when you had a lot of people that were uh, back and more of the older days, when you moved, you didn't just empty your house and move. You actually burnt your house down so you could recover the nails because they were that important. And so uh, we may end up getting to that that time again. To where you know you're out in shtf you come across a, an old abandoned picnic table that the wood's all rotten and, you know it's it's not salvageable set it on fire and get the nails out uh, those nails are going to become uh, quite a commodity people are going to uh want them they're going to be a highly sought after uh thing and item so uh which we went and we talked about 
uh, penetrance and lubricants. That's going to be something. Uh, it's going to be hard because, uh, especially depending on how long an SHTF event goes on, uh, aerosol cans are not going to last an indefinite period of time. So you're going to have to figure out different ways to do things like lubricants and penetrants, but you can use things in nature. Things like beeswax or making your own vegetable oil and things like that uh, is really good for lubricants as well as uh, used motor oil. Uh, but you're just going to have to be creative and do your research now. Next is going to be paint and a paint brush. Again, we just talked about why it wouldn't be a good idea to use, uh, you know, things in the old rattle cans. And so that's why I would say paint and a brush. You should be able, as long as you can store them correctly, uh, be able to hold that paint and brush it on. And then you can clean that brush and use it over and over uh, if you can do it all correctly. And the reason why I put that in there is because paint is a protectant on metal. If you are doing something with metal and you have exposure, if you can, if you have the ability to cover it with paint, uh, you're giving it a longer life. And so that's why I would recommend it. Uh, it might be more of a luxury thing, so you don't necessarily have to get those things, but it might be a good idea. Uh, and then sanding, the ability to sand. So some sort of a sandstone or sandpaper would be uh, probably a good idea. Uh, again, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. If you've never sanded or you don't know anything about sandpaper or anything along those lines, uh, they are going to start throwing things out there of what grit. Do you want emery cloth? Things like that. And so you're going to have to do a little bit of research and see you know what's going to be the best things to get. Um, now, as far as luxury things, because I know there's a bunch of people that's probably typing things in the comment section, uh, they're going to be like, well, what about a wrench set? Well, yes, a uh, wrench set would be probably a luxury item because you're going to have to have not only uh, the American, you know, an SAE, you're going to have to have a metric as well. And when you're talking about trying to get something down, you know, five millimeter all the way up, an adjustable wrench is one tool. Uh, yes, I understand that a wrench would be better, but you've got to carry around the ton. And then uh, the same thing with a socket set. The only thing that's different about a socket set is that if you lose or break your ratchet, uh, the sockets almost become uh, useless. Uh, now, depending maybe on like a quarter inch set, you might be able to use your uh, flathead screwdriver and wedge it down in there and a pinch and be able to use that. But, you know, uh, for a socket set, it's they're great now because we can replace them or we have multiple different ones. I get it. But for the person that is just starting out or, you know, has never, ever owned a socket set, uh, you might want to focus on a couple of other things. And then once you get those bases covers, yes, you can go and get a wrench set. You can go get a socket set and then uh, we can move into the bits so having things like a Torx bit, triple square bits, security bits, Allen bits, things like that, uh, those are going to be, again, kind of like in your wrench and your socket sets. Uh, if you have all your other bases covered, then sure, by all means, go and get them. Uh, but it's going to be one of those things. Yes, I know a bunch of things right now use Allens and Torx. I know there's a ton of things, especially on automotive, that use triple squares. There's a lot of things in the commercial realm that use security bits and things like that, that if you have the ability to disassemble, you can gather more materials and resources. So it is something definitely to consider. Now, that is what I have for you uh, as far as a list goes. I hope that that gives you a little bit of something to think about. Did I touch on everything. No, I'm trying to keep the video as short as I possibly can. And this is a longer video than what I normally do. Uh, again, that's why I'm trying to break this down into a little bit of a mini series because there's so much into it that we can really go. I know I talked a little fast on this one. So if you need to go back and rewatch it, uh, this is a channel that is for new preppers, people that's just kind of getting started thinking about becoming a prepper. So if this could help somebody out, share this out with them. Uh, and this goes out to other people as well. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are uh, even just a medium range prepper. Maybe there's some of the tools on that list that I mentioned that you do not have. 
uh, and, and be honest with yourself. Don't be embarrassed. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a middle-aged guy. If you, if I said the word claw hammer or, you know, Torx bit or whatever, and you had no idea what I was talking about, there's no shame in it. Okay. When it comes to this, it's all about ignorance and education. If you've never been taught, there's no shame in it at all. All you got to do is learn, ask questions, then you can help somebody else out. You can teach and educate them. So I hope that this gave uh, a little bit of an insight to uh, the person that asked me the question, uh, it inspired me to make this little bit of a mini series. Uh, I hope it maybe will help some others. Let me know down in the comment section below if there's some other things, if you have a different idea of some tools that maybe I forgot or if uh, this helped you out at all. But uh, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me. If you made it this far in the video, guess what? You rock. I appreciate you. And I hope you guys have an amazing day and a blessed day. But stay tuned because there's definitely more information to come. Keep on the lookout for the rest of this mini series discussing tools for SHTF. And with that, I will say, remember, above everything else, please remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.